Hey guys, and welcome back to another YouTube video. So in this video, I'm actually starting a new series on classes and objects in Python. Now I'm going to start off fairly simple and just explain to you kind of what is a class, what is an object, how can we create our own, and in future videos, I'm going to get a lot more advanced and show you some really cool things that you can do with classes and objects that not only make your life a lot easier, but are really cool in my opinion. And I didn't even know you could do them until I was kind of searching around before making this video. So make sure if you guys are interested in bringing your programming kind of to the next level and stepping out of the basics of Python and moving into more of an intermediate to advanced topic that you guys watch through the series because you're going to learn a lot and you're going to have a fundamental understanding of Python that you never uh, understood before if you can understand the topics I'm going to talk about. Okay, so let's start by talking about objects. What is an object? Well, in Python, an object is pretty much anything. And you can see on this my screen here, I have two variables, x equals 5, y equals string. Now, to us, without any understanding of objects and classes, this just looks like x is equal to an integer, that's 5, and y is a string, and that string value is string. Now, I just want to show you quickly, and you might have seen that you can do this before. If I print out the type of x, and what do you call it? We'll just do the same thing here with y. Run our program. You see we get class int and class string. Now, this is pretty trivial, you figured this was going to happen, but what does this class actually mean here? Well, pretty much whenever you create a new object in Python, so whenever you create a variable uh, or something like that, it automatically creates an instance of an object. Now, x, the way that you can also read this is x is equal to an instance of the int class and its value is 5, whereas y is equal to an instance of the str class and its value is string. Now, these classes allow us to have built-in functionality in Python. Now, you might take for granted the fact that we can do something like x plus 7, right? And obviously, we know we're going to get 12 when we do that. Or if we do like x minus 6 or x divided by 4. But someone actually coded this functionality into Python, and you just can't see it when you're coding here um, because it's kind of underneath. And I'm going to actually show you a way that you can look at this built-in um, code okay so i just know that anytime you create a variable and anytime you kind of use any functions like for example if you use uh i don't know say like h is equal to what's something we can do like int y okay i know that's not going to work but whenever you use functions like this someone already coded these functions for you and they're typically built into a class of a certain type when you do something like y dot strip you just take for take for granted the fact that you can use this dot strip method um, and this is called a method but someone actually built this in and the reason you can use this is because it's a method on the class of str if i tried to do something like x dot strip well clearly that's not going to work because x is not a string object so just understand that whenever you create anything in python it is actually an object without you really knowing it or not okay so now I'm going to show you, uh, I'm just going to run this in debug mode so I can print some stuff out to the screen, okay? So I go console and Python console, okay? So I'm using PyCharm, but this works perfectly fine with uh, regular IDLE in Python, okay? So if I type this help function and I pick a class, and I'm going to pick int like this, okay? I type help on int. You can see it prints me all this stuff. Now, what does this actually mean? Well, once we get to the top, you can see it says class int of type object or inherit from object. So pretty much whenever we create an integer and the way we create an integer in Python is simply by just saying like x equals five, x equals 470, whatever like that, it automatically defaults this x is a type int. And you can see here that it actually tells us exactly how this class works. And this is really useful if you don't know documentation, you can just type help on something and it'll read out all the class and everything for you. So convert a number string to an integer return zero if no arguments are given. That's what happens when you call the int function. And when you give a base, well, then it tells you what it does there. Okay. Now it says methods defined here. Well, these are actually all the methods that you can use on the class integer. So if you have abs, you have add and bool, seal, div mod, equal to, float, floor, floor div. And I'm going to show you what all of these actually mean uh, and why they have the underscores on them later on okay so just wait for that you can see that there's a ton of different methods and a ton of functionality already built into this integer class size of string and you can just keep going two bytes and there's a ton and then class methods defined here we're going to talk about what those are later now i want to show you if i 
do the same thing on string. So I say help on, oops, on SDR like this, then we get the same thing except for string. And this one is going to be, what do you call it, a little bit longer because there's more things you can do with string. But you can see we have class string and it inherits from object. And we'll talk about what all this means later. Just uh, follow along for now. Create a new string object from a given object uh, if encoding and so on. Okay, and then it goes down here, add contains equal. And you can go through all of the different methods that it has. Now, obviously, this is the same for Boolean values and for what do you call it? Uh, floats and all other data types in Python. Now, if any of you've ever seen turtle before, you know that if you create, for example, import turtle, okay? Wow, I can't type today. And you create like Tim equals turtle dot turtle like this. What you're actually doing is creating a new instance of a turtle object. So in this turtle module, there's a class named turtle. And when you call this what's known as a constructor, you're actually creating a new turtle object and you're just naming it Tim or storing it in the variable Tim. Okay. So what else should we talk about with objects here? Yeah, so let's talk about the difference between methods and what do you call it functions quickly. So a function everyone here should know is created with the define key, okay, or like define keyword. So if I say define func, give it a value x, and we'll simply return x plus one. Now we know to call this function, what we can do is we can simply say like print and then func of five. And we know that that should give us a value of six, right? Because it just simply adds one to what we're giving. And this is a function, there's no question about it, okay? Now a class is actually what you call with the dot operator. So this, or sorry, not a class, a method. So this dot uh, right here, turtle dot turtle, is a method that creates a new turtle object. And I'll show you what I mean here. So if I do something like print y dot upper, well, this upper right here is not a function, it's actually known as a method, and it only applies to the class str. So I'll just print this quickly to show you, we get string in all capitals, okay? If I tried to do something like x dot upper, and I click the play button here, well, x has no uh, method upper, and you can see int object has no attribute upper, okay? And that's because, well, x is an object of type int. And remember when we typed help on int, well, we didn't see any upper method there. So we actually can't use that. And that's why we can only use methods on their correct data types, right? So if you create a float and you do like, uh, I don't know, like f equals like 5.5, then obviously if we try to do f dot upper here, this is going to crash as well because, well, float object has no attribute upper, right? It ha doesn't have that class or that method, sorry, in it, okay? So a method is anything you're calling on an object itself, right? And a function is something that's gonna take an object and apply an operation to it, right? So you can see here that uh, five is passed into the function. We don't have to do like x dot function. We just pass it in there and then it returns us a value. Now methods can return us values as well. This one is returning us a value of all capital string. It's just different how we actually call those things. And they are very similar. Just the difference is the way that one of them you call on an object and one of them you have to just call and then pass an object through. And sometimes these methods can take objects as well. For example, let's see if I do x dot or f dot replace. I think that's a thing. Or I'm going to have to do y dot replace. Y dot replace like this. Okay. And then I'm going to pass it a, I don't know, what should we pass it? Let's pass it a S and we'll replace it with a blank string. Okay, so we're passing a object of type string and we're passing another object of type string and that's what this method takes as well as we have to call it on the instance, right? So string. So if I call this, we get string and six because it simply replaced S with quotations. Okay. So I think I'm going to cut the video here. Uh, I hope you have a little bit of an understanding of what an object is, because in the next video, we're going to create our own objects and our own classes. Uh, and we're going to talk about that. It just was fundamental that you guys understood this before moving on to the next video. Okay, so that's been it for this video. If you guys liked, please make sure you leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you again in the next one.